Good afternoon everyone and findings from some work that we did last year. Um, for the first time um, we pulled together data from Northern Ireland and the Republic of, Republic of Ireland on breastfeeding rates and presented that in one report that presented a picture of breastfeeding across the island of Ireland. Um, probably what I say at the outset, it wasn't our intention to compare the two jurisdictions but rather as an all-island organisation working across the two jurisdictions to bring together that information. And we know there's a lot of good work that goes on across the island with those working in breastfeeding research and breastfeeding practice. So thank you for being able to present that here today. So just what I'd like to present to you over the next 10 minutes is to just to highlight the, the policy context and what the strategic direction is for both jurisdictions, to highlight some of the data sources that we use. We didn't collect any of our own primary data for this work. Um, there's some very good um, data available through the health systems and through nationally representative surveys. We use that data um, for this report. Um, and what I'll do is I'll present some of those findings around breastfeeding prevalence over the first year of life, also some of the women's experiences of breastfeeding and the attitudes, the public attitudes and perceptions of breastfeeding as well. So bear with me as I kind of refer to both jurisdictions. Um, so firstly, in the Republic of Ireland, um, the most recent breastfeeding action plan um, published by the Health Service Executive um, published in 2016, Breastfeeding in a Healthy Ireland. That um, followed a review that IPH conducted of the previous plan for the period 2005 to 2010. And it's the aim of the Health Service Executive in the Republic to increase breastfeeding rates by 2% annually um, over the, the period of the strategy. Now, it is an ambitious um, target as well, like many. But in some ways very similar to, to Northern Ireland and the, on our strategy here, uh, the Republic of Ireland wants to normalise breastfeeding, they want to support women and they want to improve child and maternal health outcomes. And I think from that sense we really are singing off the same hymn sheet. I'm going to try to be very careful that I don't repeat what others have said in the room this morning because we've had a lot of focus obviously on Northern Ireland as uh, be, being in this jurisdiction here today. But just to, to highlight um, for you the targets that we have set for Northern Ireland, that's to achieve 70% of all babies breastfeeding one week after birth. And it's really encouraging to see the, the new figures that Janet presented just a few moments ago. And then to, to increase that further with the 40% um, uh, breastfeeding at six months. And I think probably many of you will agree that's um, where the greatest challenge probably lies. So just to highlight for you where we sourced um, our data for this particular report. Um, for the Republic of Ireland, we used um, a number of sources and they're quite varied and some of them are a little older. So we used a combination of um, healthcare system data, that was the Health Service Executive Key Performance Indicator data, data and the perinatal National Perinatal Reporting System. And in Northern Ireland, the two main sources of data for us are the maternity system and the child health system. When we looked at experiences, women's experiences of breastfeeding, their attitude, public attitudes and perceptions to breastfeeding, um, we have, we have a better picture in Northern Ireland. We don't have as many sources in the Republic. However, I'm pleased to say that that is changing actually. And last year, just shortly after we had published our report, in we published our report in October 2017. Shortly after that, the Healthy Ireland survey results were published, and for the first time, they included um, some data around public attitudes to breastfeeding. I'll, I'll mention those a little later on. Now. They haven't been repeated again in the current survey findings for 2018, which were just published a few weeks ago. But we're hopeful that those modules will be repeated again in due course and we'll have a continuing picture of uh, public attitudes in, in the Republic of Ireland. And in Northern Ireland, we're very fortunate because we get a picture of both adult and child or young persons or young people's attitudes um, and perceptions of breastfeeding. And that's really important as well because we've talked about the education piece and how that's so important from a very early age.
as I've said, the, the data that are collected on breastfeeding rates are quite different in both jurisdictions. They're collected at different time points and they're collected in different ways. And we did not set out to compare the two jurisdictions, but just to simply present the information in one report for the first time. So in the Republic of Ireland, the data on breastfeeding is collected at the point of discharge from hospital. And that's collected using the National Perinatal Reporting System. And we can see from this slide that in 2015, just under three fifths of babies were receiving some breast milk on discharge from hospital. And around half were being, um, sorry, just under half were being exclusively breastfed. Again, like much of the information that has already been presented today and been alluded to, mothers in the older age categories were more likely to breastfeed with rates around 50% in comparison to about 20% of those aged under 20. And these figures are actually very comparable um, with Northern Ireland. They're actually very similar for those age groups. And again, a very similar picture in terms of levels of deprivation. It's measured slightly differently in the Republic. They look at occupational status and for higher professional mothers, they were more than twice as likely to breastfeed as those mothers whose occupational status was classified as unemployed. Um, just sorry before I move on, what I will say, the those figures, the 2015 figures for the Republic were published by the Healthcare Pricing Office in 2017. As I understand it, those haven't been updated, but that might be because there's a new uh, maternal and neonatal clinical management system, information system um, being developed, well, in fact, being piloted and rolled out um, presently. So I think they're probably holding off until that new system and maybe others who are closer to it might, might know better than me, but that's my understanding. So the figures that we published last year, and I, I don't want to labour the point because Janet has already shared with us the most up-to-date figures, um, where the 46% of babies were being breastfed on discharge from hospital and 38% of those babies being exclusively breastfed. And we know that those rates have improved, so I'm not going to labour the point anymore. And it's good to see um, the, the improvement, particularly around the initiation rates of almost 60%. That's a good news story. And I should say, we. we we stuck with the discharge rates for this report simply because we didn't have the initiation rates for the Republic. It's been a slow process, and I think you'll all agree that it is difficult to achieve those increases over time. Um, we have seen a greater increase over the 10-year period 2006 to 2015 in the Republic with about a 9% increase in that period. Now, we can't pinpoint exactly why that is, but I think it's probably fair to say that some of those effects are due to the um, immigrant populations and um, I see a lot of nodding heads. And, and funny, when I saw the figure for Dungannon, that was the one thing that, that struck me as well, actually, in the previous presentation. But whilst those women from other, other cultures have brought those breastfeeding practices to Ireland and we've seen our rates improve as a result of those, sadly the tide is starting to turn a little bit as well and those women are becoming accultured to the, the very strong Irish bottle feeding, formula feeding practices. So that's, that's a sad turn of events. Um, and I think we, if efforts can be made to try and preserve those traditional breastfeeding practices that are, that are positively influencing here, that would be a wonderful thing. Um, just to highlight for you again, some of those figures around um, breastfeeding in the first year of life. In the Republic, we just have data up until the three month period, but hopefully again, that will change with the, um, with the new maternal information system that's being developed. And we can see that that drop off point, that drop off is, is still quite steep at the three month period. Um, it's probably also important to note that um, the public health nurse information that's collected, can, that data can be quite limited and there are gaps and there are missing data as well. So perhaps a note of caution just in relation to some of those, those figures too, but that's, is, that's what's currently available through the HSE key performance indicator data. Again, in Northern Ireland, it's already been highlighted that um, the, the drop-off is very significant over the, the first six to 12 months of a baby's life. And 
I, I did a quick comparison between each of these um, sets of figures. So um, breastfeeding at 10 to 14 days, you know, to six weeks and so on. And what I found was actually when we take the discharge figures and the 10 to 14 days, that was actually the biggest percentage difference in terms of drop off. So that's where we're seeing the steepest, steepest drop off whenever we compare each of those subsequent time points. So there are certainly shared challenges in terms of sustaining and maintaining the duration of breastfeeding. Just very briefly, and I'm conscious that the time is rolling on, and I'm now, uh, eat, pardon the pun, eating into your lunchtime. So I'll go very quickly, but um, just to highlight some of the, the points around reasons for not breastfeeding, re reasons for not maintaining breastfeeding. And this data was taken from the Growing Up in Ireland survey. And we see here this strong preference for formula feeding. And I think that comes as no surprise given the very successful marketing strategies of the infant formula industry and even given their, their place in the Republic of Ireland and, and their, their contribution to the economy there. So I think that comes as no surprise to us. Um, I think it's actually quite interesting to look at some of these findings as well in the context of some of the issues that have already been raised this morning. Um, and thinking about the solutions or to some of these problems and how they can pre be, be prevented in terms of barriers that, you know, I think um, nipple pain was one and that also featured um, in data from the infant feeding survey for the UK as well. Again, it's quite a similar picture in Northern Ireland, and this data was taken from the Infant Feeding Survey back in 2010, so it is a little bit older now at this stage. Um, the questions asked were slightly different, so just a note of caution in relation to that. But again, we see that strong indication towards formula. Again, reasons for not maintaining breastfeeding, a per perception of insufficient milk. So I think these are important issues for practitioners to be aware of in terms of the reasons that women are given for not continuing. But I think perhaps, and I don't have it on the slide, one of the most important or most interesting findings is that 63% of mothers in Northern Ireland who stopped breastfeeding during the survey period would like to have continued for longer. And that's really important. And what's also important, the earlier women stopped, the more likely they were to have preferred to have continued. So really, really important that we, we know these findings. Just, um, just very briefly, a quick note on the public attitudes and perceptions to, to breastfeeding. As I said earlier, this data was collected for the first time in the Healthy Ireland survey in 2017, reported last year. And we can see that around four fifths of adults in the Republic generally have quite positive attitudes towards breastfeeding, feeling that women have the right um, to breastfeed in public, that um, the women should feel comfortable breastfeeding um, their babies in a comfortable, uh, sorry, in a public place, and that women should be supported. So it's really important um, that we hear this and we see, we we monitor um, these attitudes to see if, if they they're they're repeated over time and improve. Just very briefly, in terms of Northern Ireland, it is an improving picture, and the data from the Health Survey NI. Um, show increases in public attitudes in terms of the perception that breastfeeding is normal, that it's good for baby, and that it's not embarrassing. People are, are moving towards that view. However, there is a small minority who still report that they find breastfeeding offensive or distasteful. And I know there are, there are efforts to try through the, the public health information campaigns to shift those, those attitudes. So just very, very finally, um, just to highlight and, and summarise some of my points, breastfeeding rates across the island have been increasing, although those increases have been slow over time. I think it's still a good news story. We know that younger mothers and those living in socioeconomic disadvantage are less likely to breastfeed. Public attitudes are improving, and it'll be really useful to, to and interesting to hear the evaluation of the Not Sorry Moms campaign as well in that context. And I think you'll all agree that creating a supportive environment is a challenge, but what we can take away from today, that is the focus of the strategic direction in both jurisdictions. I think that's really important for us going forward as an island. Um, just very finally, if I could share a really brief anecdote. Um, I was at the Joint Public Health Conference yesterday and I was chatting to a girl over lunch and we were just talking to one another about our work and I said I, I you know, did some work in the area of breastfeeding. And after a little bit of time she came back and she said, can you tell me a little bit more about your work in breastfeeding? So I said, you know, it's around research, it's influencing policy and so on. 
and um, she goes, you know, I'm really, I'm real keen supporter of breastfeeding. And she was quite a young girl. I thought, that's wonderful. I'm really pleased to hear that. So she went on to tell me, and I do have her permission to share this. She went on to tell me that um, she was a young mum. She had her first baby when she was actually at school. <laughs> So we can assume she was she was a teenage mom, and she said, I chose to breastfeed my first baby and I breastfed for seven months. Well, that was music to my ears. I thought that was just such a wonderful, wonderful story. So then um, she said, you know, it was the best thing I ever did. It really was. She, she was so enthusiastic and she said I had full support from my family, from full support from my partner's family. And she since had another little baby, a little boy, and she's still breastfeeding him and he's two and a half. And I just thought, you know, it really kind of inspired me. It kind of warmed my heart to, to hear that story. And I think there's been a huge amount of positivity in the room today. And I felt it was just appropriate to share, you know, yet another positive story. It was just one of those over lunch stories. And I was so pleased that, you know, she'd felt open to share it and was really positive about sharing her experience with her peers and said that some of her peers had actually gone on to breastfeed because she had encouraged them to do so and they wouldn't otherwise have considered it. So there are really good, there have been many good news stories today and I think that's just another one. So thank you very much everyone.